get three bids. Yes. That's good news. And thank you for managing this process for us. And we um, had the one that was. <clears throat> yeah, I've talked to them and I'll go over that with you in a minute. Okay. Well, do, would you like to? You, you know what yeah, our questions are, sure. so I'll let you go ahead and. Uh, so, just for clarity, we did that. We actually had solicited more than three contractors. Mm -hmm. uh, we, had a, we had a mandatory pre bid meeting just to make sure that everyone was, was here and we had the same information. Um, the first pre bid meeting that we had, uh, only one contractor showed up. It was a snowstorm, so that no one else came in. We re bid it the following week. Um, to the same group that we had before, and we tried to get local people. I know that uh, Caroline said she put it on the uh, municipal website as well. So the three that came to the meeting were um, Advanced Excavating, uh, Gagnon here from town, and uh, McKenna from Rochester. And we went around the entire building, we talked about all the different needs and uses that we need to have for the work that we're trying to do, both phase A and phase B. Um, we also went inside and walked around downstairs to see what was, what was going on with the uh, foundation and so forth and so on. So I was given a really good question of why we're doing what we're doing outside. So <clears throat> the purpose of that was to make sure they understood that, you know, it's not just don't, don't look at the plan and just say, okay, this is what we're going to do. There's more to it than just the plan and, and also what we're trying to accomplish here so we could have uh, a distinct understanding of what we're doing. So with that, we had the three bids that came back in. We had Dagon, which was apparently low at 38000 uh, We had um, mechanic, I'm not sorry, um, advanced at 497 and the Mechanico was 123 so when I got the bids, actually I got McKenna's, they had dropped theirs off, the other two hadn't. So then uh, Caroline had emailed those over to me. Uh, I reviewed each one, looked at the numbers, and I called up McKenna and asked, he goes, I'm embarrassed. He goes, I, I, I don't know what I did. And I said, I thought you understood exactly what was going on. He goes, I do. And I've never had him be so far out. So I asked him just to go back and look at his numbers and explain to me, or he could be himself what was going on. So for all intents and purposes, he's out of the running because uh, somehow or other, whether he made a mistake in mathematics or whatever else, mm -hmm. uh, he's kind of out of the way. Um, the, the 49 and the 38 uh, are, I, in my view, are, are essentially the same number. The reason for that is Gagan's local. And so you call him for all intents and purposes 38, and uh, they're coming, the other one's coming with both from Hooksit. So they have to travel a little bit ways, and if any type of materials in place for them to get rid of, uh, they're going to be just that much more um, expensive, expensive right. just because it has to be. Um, so I, I, in looking at the numbers, I felt uh, that that was exactly what the explanation was. So then I called Gagnon as well, and I asked him flat out, I said, okay, you were at the pre-bid meeting, you've reviewed the plans, you've understood what we're doing. He says, um, I understand that as you look at your bid, you, you didn't fill in those items uh, that we asked, and it was only when we had asked for these items, because we're asking for a lump sum bid, yep. meaning you have to understand what the work is, give us a lump sum bid, we're not going to, you know, we're not going to haggle about, uh, you know, whether you understood what was going on, because you gave us a lump sum, what we're using these line items for is just to kind of qualify the numbers from different bidders, and to see really where their numbers were and why, why they had the numbers. So then I, I went back and asked, and I said, just to confirm, you're, you, you read the, the documents, you read the plans, uh, you were at the pre-bid meeting. Is everything that, that we need to do in that number? He says, absolutely. So uh, from a verbal, he qualified his number of 38. So in the bid process, we also did a, a, a revision. So initially, we thought we would want to go to um, the catch basin that's in the little okay. landing area. Yeah. Um, and it just, it, you know, it, it just cost too, it would cost too much. So what I did was I went back and looked at the numbers and was able to get it around that and make it work. So we had submitted a, a, an RFI, yep. as you saw that plan, yep. uh, just to kind of, actually to bring the cost down as, as well to make sure it could be done. Um, so each one of these contractors was fully aware of what we were looking to do, what the scope of it and the scale of what we're trying to accomplish, what the phase A is and phase B, so they understood what, what they're doing is tying into something that we may be able to do in the future for downstairs. So, my recommendation to you is to go with Gag. Mm -hmm. Okay. Very good. Um, it, as long, we're not going to make that decision, of course, now we'll do that at a, at a board meeting, but thank you. Yep, no, I understand. I appreciate it. Yeah, because yeah, we, were, we were concerned, you know, with the lack of, of numbers there mm -hmm. and wanted, to, wanted you to say yep. what you just did. Yep. And um, so, and 
and it's good to understand why there's even that you know eleven thousand dollar difference in the distinction between those two. So while we're here, <clears throat> to to just kind of review where we are with the interior. Yes. Um, we got the number from I don't remember. Horn. Horn yes. Yeah. Which was a big scary number. Yes. Yeah. So. Hey, before you get into that, let me explain how we got to that. Okay. All right. So. When I started looking at, so our initial thought was we're going to go and put, you know, pick up the, con the concrete and everything else, and it makes all the sense in the world. You have to take care of both the water from the outside and the inside. Uh, when we first looked at it, we came in and we said, okay, the walls, we might be able to leave these, and then we could, we could uh, go between the doorways and, and so forth. Then we got to looking at it, and I was talking to the chief, and I said, chief, I said, it seems like there's an awful lot of uh, uh, walls that we're not going to be able to touch here. And I said, but there are walls that we're going to have to touch because now if we need to get to certain areas, and we had, we had, I had thought that out when we did the layout. And I said, but from a logistics standpoint, it almost looks like we should be able to, we should be able to, we should have to take everything out of here. You guys have to go find someplace else to live because we can't do the work while you're working, while you're living here because it's just not going to, it, it's going to take four times as long. So then I started looking at it and I said, okay, well, what would we do if we're going to do that? Well, if we start taking out some walls, we'd have to put those walls back. So then I said, before we get any further, why don't we call a contractor and see if they can give us a scale and scope of work. If we were to, say, demo the entire downstairs, take all the concrete out, do what we were going to do, and then pretty much bring everything back to new, which would put you up to code, bring all your new electricity, everything else, bring it up to code. And that's what that ballpark number is. And that ballpark number is not a hard and fast number. That's them giving us a scale of, of the project. Right, but it's an order of magnitude. Exactly correct. That's yeah. exactly what we'd ask them for. Yeah. And the purpose of that was um, if we, if, to, to look at this uh, not just for a one purpose need, which was put the, con put, put the under drain in and, and be done with it, and then leave everything else the same. But if you're, we're going to rip that much up, why don't we rip the whole thing up? And what would it take? Um, and it's a scary number. You know, it, it, it's a significant number. And part of that number does not include what it would take to move the, the fire, de oh, sorry, the police department out. And make sure it's off Find some place that, right. yeah, and then bring them back. Um, and then what I also asked Horn to do uh, was j just just give us a order of magnitude verbal of what it would take to do the exact same thing but build a new building, like a new municipal, new municipal building um, for that use. Um, and then we were talking about uh, New Durham had done something very similar, uh, where they had done a, um, a modular uh, facility um, in terms of what those dollars were. And, it, it, and then just the, the conversation just was just more of an educational type of conversation as to why you'd want to do that and how you would do that and that and so forth. Knowing where the land is and everything else is a whole different situation. But once you move the police department out from here, you would have to move them back in. So instead of taking that money and putting it into here, if you put it into a new facility and then your maintenance costs associated with that over the course of time means that you have a deferred maintenance because you have a brand new facility and that goes out for however long, let's say five years, where when you start today, you're still doing maintenance as you go through. So that was the purpose of, of getting that, that magnitude number and then a, a real conversation as to whether or not that, that you know, makes sense. Um, Interestingly enough, I understand the building is, a, is on a historic register, so it's not something that, that you can just forget about. You have to take care of it. And even if the police department moves out of the basement, you're still going to have to do something down there to make it habitable in some fashion for whatever type of use that you, that you can get out of it. So I don't think there's a really easy answer, but the number we got from home was exactly for that, so you guys had an idea of, of really what it was that you're going to be looking at. Um, yeah, so. no, I think it caused us to... Um you know, to talk a little bit. We, we didn't make any decisions, but we, what we have done is uh, uh, plan uh, a workshop right after town meeting, so that because we have we've been working on relocating the police permanently somewhere okay. else there, uh, or, or keeping them there but increasing the space and, and you know doing you know a complete redo. Yeah. So. Um, you know, Plan A uh, was not accepted by the town, and there was a time earlier this year when that house, that multiplex right, right before us, yeah. was for sale, and we were exploring that, and that that didn't work. 
because that would have given us the opportunity to, to have some additional space and, uh, and the like. So, so now we need to see what are, what are, what are our other space needs uh, ideas for the police. One of them could be that we you know, completely redo downstairs and, and somehow find some additional space for them, because right now it's undersized as, as well. Yeah, and that was the conversation I had with the police chief. He says, you know, we, we don't have, um, we call it, uh, they use the terms, and I apologize, I just didn't, like uh, a holding room, a, yes. all these different there types different, of right. We're not requirements, requirements that he doesn't have, which he doesn't have right, right now. And even if we renovate the whole downstairs, is that enough room? And, and based That's on true. what he no. was saying, he said no. No, so, that, so there are all those reasons why. Right. Um, so, so we still think it's a good reason to manage the exterior drainage. At the very least, and so what you're going to do with the exterior drainage is two things. One, you're going to take care of the groundwater that has potential for getting up against the foundation. And you're also going to give yourself the opportunity, when and if you can, in fact, put the roof drains on your, your gutters, you now have some place for the water to go so it's no longer just dumping right on the ground and potentially soaking back in. So those two components, no matter what you do with downstairs, you have to do those anyway. And the work that you've done, and I've done some research, talked to a bunch of people, and you've done work around the outside, you've done different things, um, but we haven't really given it a chance for the water to go somewhere else. We just tried to keep it from getting there. And now we're saying, well, you're not going to get there anymore because we're going we're to force you to go somewhere else. All right, so, and, and the interesting thing is with the amount of runoff and rain that we have here, that drainage system that we have, um, it, it's just right at the cusp of being able to handle that type of uh, flow that we're looking at. The groundwater is non issue. Groundwater just trickles out over the course of time, and then once you drain the area, it, it just kind of maintains itself. Uh, the roof runoff, when you get that type of slug of water going into that system, you know, you, you may end up, you know, at different times, you know, may blow out of that uh, catch basin. But that, that's, it's, it's all going to go back in. It's just a, a, it's a time release for, for water. So, if, we, if we're doing whatever we're going to do in the future as well, we look at that, but now you have some place to put the water. So that work called phase A, I don't think you're, you're not wasting your money to do that if, you're, if you need to and going to continue to use this space, which I think you have to. You're not, you're not going to be abandoning the space tomorrow. So I think uh, the work that you're doing, along with what you've done in the past, I think is going to give you pretty good, pretty good uh, <clears throat> leg up on it. I also asked Bob, I, I just saw him last week that we're down there to look at the, um, the stuff, and to say, well, what could, what, could he, what could we do just to sort of jackhammer out those places where doors don't, you know, just the band-aids, just, just yeah. to make it functional. So he was going to try to uh, talk to Norm Giroux. And, and, and you can do that, and we did talk about that. And I yeah. also talked about whether or not we can just come down the middle of the, the, uh, the, the, uh, the main hallway and you know just tying a few things in, see if that if that gives us the opportunity to take care of some of it. Um, I think if we put the drainage on the outside first, and then we see what happens. But you're going to have to fix we the, have to the stuff that's yeah, there the, anyway. The, yeah. So what you just said was another. Not, not an option, but it was, okay, if we're not going to do the full thing, then we have to be able to do the Band-Aid for the areas that need to be taken care of, um, which is the normal phone call. So I think, um, I think that, that's going to be part of the mix of what you're doing, mm -hmm. um, at least now since you can close and open the doors. Right, exactly. And then going forward, you know, the board, you know, working with Bob and whatever, can, can see where, what are the possibilities for a more permanent Right. Uh, solution. Oh, the solution, yeah. Yeah, for the police. And then start to plan that out. So. Yeah, I, I, it's, it's a tough, uh, you know, it's like anything else. There are so many needs. Yes, absolutely. You know, it's not just well, we're, try, we're trying to answer them. Yeah. We're trying to resolve them. Yeah. We're chipping away. <laughs> it's not easy, I get it. A piece at a time. So. So thank you so much. You All right. Uh, we'll, Any questions? We'll let, no. So the next step is for the board to make its decision, yeah. and uh, then town meeting. That's but that's all in there, right? They know. Uh, uh, yeah, yeah, absolutely. There's no misunderstanding. It was it was very well yeah. identified, and it says. So even if we accept it before town meeting, it's still subject to the approval from town meeting. Is that? Yeah, you guys can do whatever you want. You have the caveat in all these different documents that if you, whatever is in the best interest of the town. You can do, you can do however you can do it. Uh, but there is no misunderstanding that this was based on 
you guys going to the town to get an approval to do it. Yeah. So, um, and, and, and Norm's in town, so he knows. Yeah, and we can at least give him a verbal okay if, if he is, ends up being the one to, and just say, now we have to wait until town meeting. Yeah, well, I think that when you open these as a, uh, uh, when you, you uh, provided all the contractors with the pricing, everyone knows that if you're going to give the job, it's going to work. So Norm already knows the fact that I called him as well. I think he's he's teed up to know that, that you know. I, I don't think he necessarily need to give me anything until I'm in town meeting on, on, on okay. Saturday. Okay. Um, because he's going to know. Or whenever it is. Oh, when, oh yeah, sure. So but that's the that's next, the next meeting. meeting after you, sorry. You want to stick around? No, no. I thought maybe it was about the weather, but no. it is. Oh, well, it is. Weather. It's weather related. It's, the problem is tomorrow. Yeah. Right. So if tomorrow is. If we reschedule tomorrow, if we reschedule it to a time oh, after set, yeah, oh, our oh, town oh, meeting is set. Yeah, but we yeah. need to have the election before the town meeting. The town meeting is actually a continuance of the election. So, so that's our next meeting is to figure out how all that is going. You guys got stuff to do. Yeah, it just never ends, you know. It's always this is so much fun. Hassle of fun, yes. Yeah, no, I, I, of fun. What's interesting is in this type of scenario too, what we do right now, and it's a good thing the public is, you know, at least someone from the public. They don't have, no one really has an idea of what, what it ends up being, what you're talking about, what you're trying to balance. You know, because I'm on boards as well, like and joint building committees and everything else, and everyone goes, oh. I said, well, you have to look at the, the scope and scale of what we've been trying to accomplish. And then it's all the needs and wants. Mm -hmm. And boy, you know, you can't solve well, competing interests. Yes. yes. So, all right. Well, thank you. Well, Steve, thank, thank you so much for your Much appreciated. Very helpful. Yes, very helpful. Thank you so much. So I need to let Charlie know what number he's going to call. Is he calling in? Yeah. Many meetings, a lot of information. Yes.